Hello beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. This is gonna be a review of Love and Marriage Huntsville Soft Ball Hard Shade. So we start off where we left off in the previous episode. Letitia is meeting with her therapist and the question that the therapist had posed to her at the last episode was all these rumors that are circulating about your husband Marceau, how do you know that they are even are they true? Are they false? How do you verify um, the validity in these rumors? And basically she said that she just asks her husband, Marcel, and he tells her he's not doing anything. And she says that she looks deeply into his eyes and she believes him. She says he's telling her the truth. And then they talked about how Tisha has really lost herself in her marriage, in being a mother, being a wife. Uh, the Tisha that she used to be is like no more. And she wants to find herself again, basically. And she said that when she and Marceau first met, you know, it was nothing for her to go get things for herself. But then Marceau would like have an issue with that. So he would encourage her to uh, basically sort of rely on him to get things for her. And so this kind of caused her to be very dependent on him. And the therapist had pointed out, why do you think, you know, Marcel wanted you to be dependent on him? And I think she said something about, and I could be imagining this, but I think she said something about how um, it was a way to show, for him to show her that he was a provider, that he wanted to take care of her. And, um, the therapist said, well, maybe also he is, he was trying to get you to be more dependent on him so that you wouldn't leave him. Maybe he has a fear of, of um, abandonment and a way to keep you with him is to make you rely on him for everything. And so, you know, I guess whatever dreams that she had to do whatever professionally career wise were shelved so that she can be this housewife and this mother for him and the children now i kind of am believing with a the therapist to saying that maybe marcel did want tisha to be more dependent on him i'm kind of believing that because i really do think that something about marcel he just really wanted a very traditional wife and he found a woman who probably was very career minded and he didn't want her to be that way. So he kind of did make her become more dependent on him because I think he wants Tisha to be the traditional wife to stay home, take care of the kids, take care of the house, you know, take care of him. And so that he can probably, you know, always have someone there for him. Maybe he does have a fear of abandonment. You know, then I'm thinking to myself, maybe his depression or whatever he's going through mentally, maybe it's because Tisha is trying to become more independent and he doesn't know how to deal with that. And it's not really work related, it's probably more relationship related. And so I think Marcel really wanted to have a wife that cooked and cleaned and stayed home. And Tisha was that for, very, for many years and now that she doesn't want to be that anymore, he's struggling. Um, because he wants her to stay that way. She doesn't want to be that way. And he's struggling with that. I'm thinking maybe that's what it is, but I could be wrong. So moving on from them. So Melody and Martell, they take out their kids. And this was amazing to me. This was a really good scene. Melody and Martell take the kids out to the park and, um, their therapist has suggested that, that they do a, a, like an assignment or, um, like a project or something, um, to help the children, I guess, express themselves more as far as what they're going through with their parents being separated. So, excuse me, they're all sitting around um, on the grass and there were these cards where um, the cards were, you know, I guess for any age, it's really, the, the questioning of the cards was more geared towards someone a little bit older, but um, Melody would... Um, make it easier she would read the question and then she would explain what the question really meant to make it easier for her children to understand and these children are just so i thought that they, these, these kids were great i thought they were, this was a, a good scene to see to see how they really are and um 
they just express themselves so well. I was really impressed by Melody and Martell's children. And I can't believe that the little one is already walking. So um, the son, well, all basically just to sum it all up, the children don't want <laughs> their parents uh, to be separated like this. They want their parents to come back together. They don't want their parents to meet anyone else, uh, to remarry, because they say they don't want any stepmoms or stepdads. And the Melody try to tell them that, you know, if mommy and daddy did want to be with someone else or marry someone else you know you'd be getting a bonus mom or a bonus dad um so you would have even more love and you would have uh you know um you know, more love around you, uh, more people to play with. So look at it as like a bonus and not as, you know, anything negative if there was a stepmom or a stepdad in the picture. But those kids weren't trying to hear that. Now, the second to youngest daughter, I mean, she's really quick. She's she's really, really, really intelligent. The second to the youngest daughter, the whole time that the older siblings were talking about how, you know, they want mommy and daddy back together. They don't want them to be in separate homes. They don't like the whole two home thing they want mom and dad in one home that second to youngest one was really she was just paying attention she was just listening to what everybody was saying and then um i think then there was a time for the kids to ask whatever they wanted to ask and i think one of them asked um if they had if mommy and daddy had a crush on someone else and martel said yes but he meant he had a crush on them and then that second to youngest she piped up she piped up and she was like no 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 you don't mean us you're not talking about us when you say that you do have a crush on someone and then she talked about how she had seen her dad getting into the elevator with a, a woman and martel was shocked and she was like where did where were you at where did you see this at and the little girl said that she was with mommy when she saw daddy getting into the elevator with a with another woman so that was like a big mystery because they didn't go too much into it because that little girl didn't want <laughs> she didn't want her mom because I think Melody was about to explain what she was talking about but then the little girl was like no mommy no mommy and so Melody was like oh yeah 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 it's our little secret so there was something going on there that they didn't want to spend too much time on but that second to youngest is really really smart and um so they basically were saying how you know they're not and every time that the kids would talk about we want mommy and daddy together we want y'all in one home again we want to be a family again you know melody you can tell from the look on her face especially in her eyes she just was not feeling that like she wants her kids to accept life the way it is that this this is just how it's going to be she wants her kids to be adjusted to this new way of living you know with uh, mommy and daddy in two separate homes and then because she was saying she was telling her children you know now that we're not living together in one home you know are is it mommy happier and that second to youngest one she was like yeah, because I don't like y'all fussing all the time. That second to youngest one, she's a little bit different from her older siblings where she's probably thinking, yeah, maybe it's a better idea for y'all not to be together in one home. Um, so then they let the kids go play and Melody asked Martel, so when are you going to introduce them to your other child, you know, to their other sibling? And um, she says, I want you to do this, you know, fairly quickly. She's not really trying to put a lot of pressure on him, but she's like, I want you to do this fairly quickly um, because, you know, the child is here and the longer you postpone it, I guess the more it's going to look like a secret and you don't want another child to be seen as some type of dirty little secret. And so uh, Melody was saying, you know, and I can also be there too, just to let them know that mommy's okay with it, that, you know, I'm not upset about it and that I'm willing to accept this new child. And then Martel's like, well, I'm working on it. I'll do it in my time. And he says, I would prefer for you not to be there when I do do that. So that's that. Okay, so then they talk about the whole 47 acres thing. I really didn't care about that. And yeah, so we're going to move on. Letitia and Marcel, they're at their office. Every time I see Tisha, she just looks so stressed about, she's always looking like she's either on the verge of tears or she's not happy or she's stressed out. Or maybe she just wants, because Melody has really been through a lot, but Melody has a way of just being kind of upbeat Tisha, you know, you're the one that's supposed to have this idyll idyllic marriage, idyllic family house, family. You're the one that you have so much going for you. You got this wonderful husband that doesn't cheat. Why every time the camera is on you, Tisha, you're so stressed out. You look so stressed out or about to cry. So Letitia and her husband are meeting at their office and she talks about how she's planning this destiny race. I guess it's like a, a 5K um 
I don't know what. It's a race, okay? And it's for charity. And um, she's also wanting people, you know, people can either do the race itself or they can volunteer or they can donate. And if they donate, it's going to be under the Letitia and Marcel Foundation so that the donate the donors can get a tax write-off because they're donating to a charity. And so she said the only people that really responded to her invite was Melody and Destiny. Kimmy and Tiffany didn't respond. So then they go to talk about how she had gone to her therapy session. She had a solo session with her therapist. And then she talks about how she's lost herself in this whole family life. And um, I guess, you know, trying to say that the therapist was trying to encourage her to kind of find herself again. And Marcel was like, well, you know, I kind of agree and I kind of don't agree with what the therapist said. He was saying that um, it seems like from what Marcel was saying that what he interpreted the therapist telling Tisha was that kind of like maybe she had to choose. Are you going to be this housewife or are you going to be a career woman? And Marcel was like, well, why can't you just do both and be good at both? You know, why don't you be the greatest mother, the greatest wife, the greatest uh, real estate broker, the greatest, you know, builder, just do all of these things and be good at it. You don't have to be just because you are a good housewife doesn't mean you can't be a good career woman and vice versa. I think that's what he was trying to tell her. That's how I interpreted it as. Um, and then they talk about the rumors I was swirling around about Marceau being, you know, unfaithful to Tisha. And once again, Marceau is being typical Marceau. He's not going to confirm or deny anything. He's going to let you come up to your own conclusion. And basically to him, if you know me, then you know what the truth is. Whatever that is. <laughs> and so Tisha was like, oh, I believe you. Her mouth was saying it, but her facial expression and her body language was not like she, she didn't act like she believed him. Then we move on to the one year anniversary for Lewis and Tiffany. And I was like, wow, these people have only been married a year. <laughs> and they think that they got this marriage thing down pat. They're, they've both been divorced. They've only been married a year, but they think that they're just the experts of marriage. Something about Tiffany and Lewis kind of just rubs me the wrong way, just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. I think they just have this air about them that, you know, we have the best marriage. We have the strongest relationship. We can teach all these people a thing or two because we've been divorced and remarried and we're a blended family. So we can teach somebody something and not necessarily. So they just have this condescending, uh, holier than thou kind of air about them. That's how I feel. I don't know. Y'all let me know if y'all feel the same way about these two people. So they're going to be at a, so they're celebrating the one year anniversary at the baseball field because that's where, uh, Tiffany had, uh, sprung this surprise wedding on Lewis because he had no idea that they were going to get married that day. So she just completely surprised him on the baseball field and they got married. And, um, so they do the whole baseball thing. They play baseball. They have fun. Then they all go back inside and they're all sitting around. The men and the women are all sitting around together. And it always comes back to Mel and Martel's divorce. So I don't know what was being said, but in his confessional, Martel was like, you know, here we go again. People feeling sorry for me. You know, I'm the divorced dad. And he gets tired of that. He gets tired of people feeling sorry for him. Like, oh, Mel left you. And what are you going to do without Mel? And he doesn't want to be seen like that anymore. So... Him and Mel, he starts talking about how, I don't know how it started, but he starts talking about how um, <laughs> he was the one that wanted to divorce Mel, that this whole divorce thing was not Mel's idea. I think Mel ended up filing for the divorce. She filed the petition for it, but he says that he was the one that really wanted the divorce and to, uh, you know, uh, to allow her to say face, he was going to let her do the filing. But he was the one that really initiated the whole uh, machine, uh, putting it into action that they were going to get a divorce. But, you know, he didn't want her to embarrass herself by him filing. So he allowed her to file. And he compared it to Kim and Kanye, which I had no idea. I don't even know if Kim and Kanye are together, divorced, or what's going on with them. But he said that, you know, it's just like Kim and Kanye. You know, Kanye wanted the divorce, but in order to protect Kim's reputation, you know, like, you, you know, you don't want to be seen as a woman where your man left you. So he allowed her to file for the divorce, even though he was a, the one that really wanted it. Excuse me. So this started a huge argument again. I'm not going to get into what Mel said, what Martel said, because the whole thing is stupid and petty. But they're arguing. I mean, this argument, I'm pretty sure, lasted a lot longer than what we saw. And the producers just had to edit a lot of that out. Because 
everybody around them was bored to tears listening to them argue. And they were arguing about who wanted the divorce first, who initiated the divorce first. It's so stupid. It doesn't even matter because y'all are now divorced and y'all are <laughs> trying to put your lives back together after a 13, 12, 13 year marriage. So who cares who filed first? But they went on and on and on and on. I'm beginning to wonder if these people have, you know, like a, a different kind of tension going on between them because Every time that they are in front of people, they're just going at it, going at it. And you really wonder, okay, do y'all really hate each other? Or are y'all acting like this because y'all really want each other and got no way to deal with that? So that's why you're arguing so much. So, um, okay, so the whole Kim and Kanye example that he gave, which made no sense to anybody because, you know, you're not Kim and Kanye. And so Lewis, he tries to step in and defuse the situation. And every time Lewis opens his mouth, especially when he's talking to Martel, it's always, he wants to start off, well, as men and as men, and we need to do this as men, we need to be above all of this and as men. And we need, and it, to me, the way, maybe because I kind of don't care for these people, the way that I take it is like, he is trying to make it seem like, okay, men have to be in control of their emotions and in control of the situation because these women, they are just out of control. They're crazy. They're emotional. You know, they'll push you to the edge. They'll make you do this. They'll make you do that. So as men, we have to be in, and it's just so nerve wracking. Maybe I misunderstood or, or I, I I'm just automatically going to see the negative in him. I don't know, but that's how I took it. That's how I saw it. And it kind of got on my nerves. It really got on my nerves. And so, and so then, um, Tiffany and Lewis in their confessional, they say that they always try to, you know, when, when the group tries to come together to celebrate something really wonderful, like their one year anniversary or, um, Tisha and Marceau's, uh, anniversary or in, in Vegas, you know, Melody and Martel are always there to mess it up. And I'm like, well, y'all keep inviting them. You know, this divorce is still very, very fresh for them. And they're going through a lot because they're dealing with it publicly. So y'all have these events, these grandiose events, and y'all invite them together. And you know what you're getting when you invite them because they're not at that maturity level in their divorce, in their divorcee maturity level to be able to be in the same room without going at it. And y'all, people expect them to uh, be better than that, which is fine, but they're not. They're not better than that because this is a whole different kind of thing. You can't compare their divorce to anybody else's divorce on the show because this is being dealt with publicly on a show, publicly on social media. A, th a million people are putting in their two cents constantly on what they should and shouldn't do, what happened, what didn't happen. So this is a little bit different. I wouldn't invite Mel and Martel anywhere together. If I was trying to have a very peaceful, uh, celebratory type of an event, trying to celebrate love and marriage. And that's another thing. Y'all are inviting them to these anniversaries, which is just reminding them how they failed in their own marriage because y'all are marking a, a first year, then Marceau and Letitia marking a however many years, 15 years or whatever, how long they've been married. And y'all are inviting them to these lovey-dovey type of events Everyone's coupled up, except for Destiny. Everyone's coupled up. They can't bring their significant others for whatever reason. If they have any, I don't know. Of course, it's going to be tension-filled tension filled for them. So why do y'all do that? Why not just invite one of them to one event, invite the other one to another event, or how about this? Don't invite them at all. Let them deal with their issues, you know, far away from y'all's anniversaries. But I just didn't like how... Lewis and Tiffany, well, every time we invite them, you know, they always have to go out and we're trying to sell their way love and happiness. But they're recently divorced people who are going through a lot. Why are you inviting them to something to celebrate the success of your marriage? So that was stupid. Okay. So the men and women separate, the women stay inside, the men go outside. And this is when Tisha Marcel arrived. Okay, for the most part of the scene, for the majority of the scene where everyone came back inside and Mel and Martella were arguing and all of that, I don't know where was Marcel and Tisha. They had disappeared. So when the men separated and went outside, that's when they the Tisha and Marcel arrived. So they come in and <laughs> Marcel read the room where the women were at and he quickly got out of there. So with the women, 
um, they're, you know, the women are trying to give Melody advice about how don't let Martell get to you, da 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 da. And then um, Melody says, well, you know, he just triggers me. And what triggers me are the lies when he's lying. But Mel, so what? He's gonna lie. You can't try to disprove every single lie that comes out of his mouth. And the fact that he knows he's gonna lie, he's gonna say something that's not true, that's gonna purposely make you upset, just shows how weak you are around him. So you know he's gonna lie because he's gonna try to make himself look good. He's he's still trying to build his reputation or rewrite history to make himself look like he wasn't the bad guy in this situation. Just don't let it bother you. Just ignore him. You know, just completely ignore him. When he wants to bring up a lie about whatever, just bring up the kids or talk about the weather or just ignore him. You don't have to. And so then the women were trying to tell her, you don't have to react all the time. Don't let this man push your buttons. She's like, well, so what am I supposed to do? Just let him lie? Yes. Just let him lie. The truth will come out eventually. Let him lie. Let him lie. Yes, let him dig his own self into a deeper hole. Because the funny thing is, whenever they get into these arguments, especially in this particular episode, Marcel is just sitting back, relaxed, cool, calm, collected. Like he's just, you know, he's just throwing these daggers at her. And he's just sort of like enjoying it. It really does look like he's enjoying it. And she's the one that's hooting and hollering. And she's moving around in her seat, you know, and her, her she's like really animated. Like she gets really, really upset. And he's just sitting there chilling shooting out one lie after another knowing that she's gonna look crazy and melody falls for it the best thing to do when someone is trying to trigger you and push your buttons just ignore them so outside martel and the guys of course they're trying to talk to martel about you know whenever you're with melody da, 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 try to keep it cool here comes you know mr mr marriage expert lewis you know as men as men we got to do this and we got to do that as men and then martell is like oh i'm so sick and tired of this as men thing you know whatever is expected of us should be expected of them if we have to you know keep my our mouth shut and not say anything they got to do the same thing he's tired of the double standard like he's expected to be you know um he's put on a much higher uh pedestal or People expect so much more from him than Melody's. Like, Melody can just, you know, run amok, and he's the one that has to be in control. And he's tired of the double standard. And then Maurice says, well, the double standard is there. It's always going to be there. You can't fight it. You can't do anything about it, you know? So that's just how it is. It's not going to go away. And so, okay, so it's going to be a double standard. So then... um. Yeah, so that's the end of that. Then we move on to the women. We're back inside with the women. And Tisha brings up the destiny race. And she says how, you know, she had invited um, in a group text. She had sent out this invitation to all the women. And the only ones that responded were uh, Tiffany, no, excuse me, Destiny and Melody. And so Tisha, uh, Kimmy said, well, I didn't have to respond because I didn't like how you you know, included me in this group text. So Kimmy was really offended or put off by being included in this group te text uh, that Tisha has sent out. And it wasn't even a group text from what I gathered. And, you know, let me know if I'm wrong. But in the group text, it wasn't even like, hey, can y'all, you know, I'm inviting everyone to my destiny race. I think she was asking for donations from the women, from, you know, the small group of women. I think she was asking for donations. Um, and then Kimmy said, well, you know, if you could look on your website, you would see that I did volunteer or that I did sign up for it or whatever she did on the website. And Kimmy said, I just didn't like how, you know, when it comes to giving out, you know, giving money, you do it in this group text when you could have just called me and, you know, asked me. And so all the women were like, okay, so what was the issue with her doing it in a group text? But Kimmy was really put off by that. Um, she didn't want to be included in that group text at all when it came to asking for the donation. And then Kimmy says, well, why don't you just call me like you normally do when you want me to support your event? And then Tisha says, well, I always call you. But then she goes, then she kind of thought about it. And she's like, yeah, I always call you, but you never call me. Every time I get off the phone with you, I realize that you never, ever call me. Like it's a one-sided relationship. I'm the one that's always putting in the effort and you don't even meet me halfway. And then Kimmy tries to say that... Um, you know, if you see our history, I'm not a big caller. I'm not a big phone person. People always say that. People that don't want to return no calls, return no texts. Oh, I'm not a big texter. I'm not a big caller. So 
And so I kind of, when she said that, I was like, hey, look, I'm not, I'm not a big caller. You know, I can't be on the phone all the time. It kind of made me wonder, was she like kind of calling Tisha out? Maybe trying to say that Tisha doesn't have enough to do because Tisha to me, I think she suffers a lot from insecurity and inferiority with a lot of things, especially with the women in this group who are very accomplished women like Melody and Kimmy. Kimmy is a registered nurse, I think. And then Melody with all of her businesses and all of her, that she's got going on business opportunities and stuff. And I feel like maybe Kimmy, I mean, Tisha feels like she's not doing enough professionally and she feels less than around these other women. And so maybe Kimmy was trying to say, look, I'm not a stay at home mom and I can't be, you know, jaw jacking on the phone with you all day long. I've got to work. I got stuff to do. That's how I take it. So um, Tisha says, well, if you're not a big talker, you are you a big planner because you do like to plan stuff but that you don't include me in and so Kimmy was like what what event have I planned that I didn't include you in and then uh you know I had a flashback because then Tisha was like oh you don't know what event I'm talking about well if you don't want to mention it then I'm not going to talk about it and then Kimmy's like no 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 no. you put it out there what event am I planning that I did not include you in and then um the other women were like yeah Tisha like what are you talking about because you put it out there like you knew this for a fact you know she wasn't like oh when you do things you don't invite me she says like you are planning an event that you did not invite me to or you didn't include me in and Everybody kept on asking, what event are you talking about? What are you talking about? And she's like, I, I, I'm not talking to y'all. I'm talking to Kimmy. This is, I'm just talking directly to Kimmy. This is directed to Kimmy. And so Kimmy was like, what event? Did I am I planning that I'm not inviting you in? And it was a flashback to when Kimmy went at it with Miss Wanda because Miss Wanda was like, Oh, you know what she put on social media about Kimmy. And then Kimmy called her out and was like, What did I put out there on social media? Well, you know what you put out there. What did I no, you need to tell me what I put out there in social media. And it's like, Well, we're living that, but now we are reliving it with Miss Wanda Jr. And so Tisha was like, No, nah, well, well, if you don't want to talk about it, I don't want to talk about it. And so it's really irritating. Like, why mention, if you're not going to go all out and talk about it, don't talk about it. Just don't mention it at all. It's so irritating when people do that. And so, um, yeah, that's basically where that ended. And so there's a lot of tension between Tisha and Kimmy. There's something, and, and I think it's got a lot to do with Tisha. I think Kimmy can get along with anybody. And I like how Kimmy always, you know, keeps it really calm, cool, and collected. And But anyways, so yeah, there's a lot of tension there. I'm really interested. I'm going to dig deeper into the whole Kimmy and Tisha thing. Like, what's really going on? I think it's because uh, Tisha probably is a little bit jealous of Kimmy, Uh I haven't heard no rumors about Maurice. I haven't heard any rumors about Marcel either, except the innuendos that they bring up on the show, which they don't bring up any innuendos about Maurice. So I don't know if she's jealous of her marriage, jealous of her life. I have no idea. But there's something going on between Tisha and Kimmy. There's some kind of tension there that... Um, I want to know more about so that is the end of my review if you made it this far thank you i appreciate it more than you'll ever know if you like it go ahead and give me a like and if you really 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 like it go ahead and subscribe and i'll talk to you later